This is not speaking of what a woman does in a space of six months or eight months. This is probably over her lifetime. Hi there, Mirella Mack here and welcome to the Proverbs Challenge where we read a chapter a day from the book of Proverbs. Today is the last day. We are reading Proverbs chapter 31. So do get your Bibles, your journals, and we can begin for the last time. <laughs> Before we read the last chapter, let us open up the word of prayer. For what is it to read the word of God without God? Heavenly Father, we come before you. Thankful for this journey. Thankful for your word. Lord, as we read the last chapter, we ask that you minister to everybody that is watching. Lord, we thank you that this is not the end of us reading the word. This has created a hunger and an appetite to read more of your word and to hear you more clearly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now let's begin the reading of Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31, the New Living Translation. The sayings of King Lemuel contain this message, which his mother taught him. O oh my son, O oh son of my womb, O oh son of my vows, do not waste your strength on women, on those who ruin kings. It is not for kings or Lemuel to guzzle wine. Rulers should not crave alcohol, for if they drink, they may forget the law and not give justice to the oppressed. Alcohol is for the lying and wine for those in bitter distress. Let them drink to forget their poverty and remember their troubles no more. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves and show justice for those being crushed. Yes, speak up for the poor and helpless and see that they get justice. Who can find a virtuous and capable wife? She is more precious than rubies. Her husband can trust her and she will greatly enrich his life. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She finds wool and flax and busily spins it. She is like a merchant's ship bringing her food from afar. She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plan the day's work for her servant girls. She goes to inspect a field and buys it. With her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She's energetic and strong, a hard worker. She makes sure her dealings are profitable. Her lamp burns late into the night. Her hands are busy spinning thread fingers twisting fiber. She extends a helping hand to the poor. She opens her arms to the needy. She has no fear of winter for her household, for everyone has warm clothes. She makes her own bedspreads. She dresses in fine linen and purple gowns. Her husband is well known at the city gates where he sits with the other civic leaders. She makes belted linen garments and sashes to sell to the merchants. She's clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise, and she gives instructions with kindness. She carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty does not last, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Reward her for all she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. Now that was the reading of Proverbs chapter 31. Now let's do our deep dive and I'll share the verses that I have. Now let's jump into this woman. This woman whom I didn't like initially over the years. Nah, in the past, I didn't like her. She just sounded so perfect. And in my sinful state, that was annoying. She annoyed me. I was like, oh, she wakes up early. Oh, she that thing. I was like, meh, right? However, within my second year of marriage, I remember reading this. And the first thing that came up was Proverbs chapter 31 is a blueprint for women. If you ever find yourself saying, I'm bored, I have nothing to do, honey, read Proverbs 31. She has stuff for you to do. We have work to do. The second thing I picked up from all the verses was how capable women are. 
how capable I am. She wakes up early, she sleeps late. She buys fields, takes care of the kids. She cooks, the servants, she's kind, she's this. And I'm like, there is no complaint of this woman is exhausted, this woman is this. No, have you noticed how the enemy has managed to creep in and give us the wrong advice? Have you noticed how the enemy has managed to make women hate their capability? Like, he makes us hate the fact that we can do this. We can wake up early. We can sleep in. We can plan. We can see. We can cook. We can clean. We can. We are highly capable. Like, oh no, it's abuse. Don't do that. She has servants. So nah, girl, we ain't getting abused. You have servants. You can afford servants. It says so. However, just because she has servants doesn't mean she then does this. No. She doesn't then say, she is a woman who is active and involved. If you ever say to yourself, I'm bored, I don't know what to do, honey, here is your blueprint. The first thing I read was that her husband can trust her. First thing, are you trustworthy? Can your husband trust you? When money is left on the bedside, when you find money in your husband's pocket, like in his pants, what do you do? Are you trustworthy? Do you say, hey, I found a hundred dollars, it's over there. Or do you go, Psha. <laughs> are you trustworthy? Are you trust, are you talking about him behind his back and saying all these things about him to people? Are you telling his friends that, mm, are you, what are you, are you trustworthy? Can your husband trust you? Can people trust you? If you're not married, can people trust you? Are you a gossiper? Are you back chatting people? What? Are you trustworthy? Are you a woman, woman of your word? The next verse says she finds wool and flax. Remember, this is a time, right? I, no one said go find wool and flax and start spinning it. It is in the time. You have to find what, what resonates with our time. It says she finds wool and flax. Not that the wool and flax find her. She's going out. She's like, okay, I need to go look for this. She's intentionally going out to keep herself busy to keep herself not busy but productive right she's like a merchant ship bringing her food from afar what does that look like in 2024 new recipes right doesn't say you fly to italy and then bring back food no you can i guess you've got the money but try not new recipes or is it sadzama veggie sadzama veggie sadzama veggie rice chicken it says she brings Bring her food from afar, meaning there's different ways. She's she's expressive, she can cook, she's trying new spices. She's, it's just the home is not just the same meal every day, Monday to Friday, Monday to Sunday. It's just the same stuff. The food hasn't changed. It's the same recipes you've been making since your first year of marriage. You haven't even tried making a pizza, you haven't even tried making burgers. You're just the same thing every day day it says bringing her food from afar that for me means i gotta be creative in the kitchen i get to be creative in the kitchen not that i have to but i get to be creative it says she gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast she wakes up early i love waking up early i it rejuvenates me it it gives me such energy it gives me such i don't know endorphins i don't know if that's the word but it feeds me waking up early feeds me and it allows you to be ahead of the day instead of you chasing the day. When I'm late, I am loud, I am screaming, I'm pushing everyone in the house because I'm behind and I have so much to do. But when I wake up early, I wake up at my own pace. Like right now, the home is quiet. No one's disturbing me. I'm at ease. After this, I'm gonna have my coffee outside in peace. Waking up early is a gift you give yourself. It says she goes to inspect a field, that's verse 16, and buys it. Besides the fact that she bought it, she's capable of inspecting a field, are you? Can your husband trust you even if he gave you the money to go look for a field or a property or an investment? Are you knowledgeable enough to invest? This is talking about investments. And it says with her earnings, she plans a vineyard. That means she reinvests. Are you capable? Do you have knowledge? Outside of being a housewife, great. Thank you so much. What 
do you know about stocks? What do you know about reinvestment? What do you know about money growth? What do you know about money? Are you listening? Not necessarily to the news. Are you reading books? Are you finding out? Are you asking questions about, okay, what's the property market looking like right now? Okay, what does that, ah, all right. So if I invest in this, how many years? She's reinvesting. Since she plants vineyards. Vineyards take time. Oh my goodness. It's just dawning on me right now. Planting a vineyard, grapes don't grow overnight. They need to be pruned, then you have to wait for the ripe ones, and then there's this, and there's so many things that are going on. She plants a vineyard, so she's doing long-term investment. Oof, Jesus. She is doing long-term investment. She's not looking for quick money. Just did it. No. After buying her field, she does long-term investments and reinvests. We're going to jump to verse 20. She extends a helping hand to the poor and opens her arms to the needy. I know women that are stingy, that think only of themselves. And they think it's part of planning. Being selfish is not a form of preservation. There's wisdom that is required of saying, no, 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 we're not going to give here. This is how we're going to give, planned giving. She extends a helping hand to the poor. She's aware. She's aware that we need to be giving. She needs to be giving. And opening her arms to the needy. Those in need, she's like, okay, come through. She's capable of doing so. After planting a vineyard and doing this, she's a busy woman. However, she does make time to give. Now, if you don't have money, it does not mean you cannot give. She can give in time. Helping a charity in being present. You don't have to just give money to a charity. They need volunteers. They need hands. The children need hugs. Whichever charity you're dealing with, your presence, your time is of value. It's not just about money. So don't limit yourself. Verse 21, she has no fearful winter for her household has warm clothing, right? She's planned. Right now we are in summer. This is March the 31st. We're in summer. Winter is literally creeping in. Right now, the morning is quite cool. I can tell in about a month or so, it's going to be getting quite chilly. Do your children have tracksuits? Do your children have socks? You don't start buying socks and tracksuits in winter. That is late. Your children will be getting cold. Right? You prepare. Right now, when you prepare ahead of time, you have no pressure. She's saying she has no fear of winter. Oh my God, what are we going to do? School fees, right now it's, it's, it's the holiday season. Is it not the time for you to pay second term fees? Is it not the time to pay third term fees? Is it not the time to be planning for your kids' high school, for your kids' grade one positions? People have already started looking from birth. Your child is five and you haven't looked. She is preparing for winter for yourself. Do you have socks? Do you have a blanket? Does your mother have a blanket for winter? Does your father have socks for winter? She does not fear the future. Are we planning? What's happening for Christmas this year? Are you planning? If you find yourself bored as a woman, I encourage you. Read Proverbs 31. We have work to do. Verse 22 says she dresses in fine linen and purple gowns. I love this verse. She dresses good. She dresses well. She dresses in the best of the time. And I am literally in that space where I'm like, Lord, help me dress better. Lord help me. We should not be, yo, I'm about to come for some people. We cannot be walking around in bon mache t-shirts and leggings. We cannot be walking around in spa t-shirts, no bras and leggings. Right? You cannot be wearing your husband's, a, what's it called? Castle Laga shirt. Or you're just frumpy looking. I have a cousin, my bestie, who came into my wardrobe years ago prior to getting married. And she says, we do not keep frumpy clothing if we keep frumpy clothing or unattractive clothing it will find itself on our bodies so what we're going to do is remove all t-shirts and these torn things and torn socks and torn underwear remove it because when you remove all that stuff and you keep good dresses and skirts you are forced to dress well every morning you don't wear like t-shirts that are big and you cry and she removed all that. She decluttered and she said, no, ma'am. Now I found myself, I wake up like this. On a normal day when I'm just at home, I'm in a dress. I'm in a skirt. 
I'm in a lovely outfit because she says be intentional about how you present yourself to yourself every day. Verse 24 says she makes sashes and sells to the merchants. For this, it wasn't about making anything at all. She has multiple streams of income. That's what I saw. I was like, girl, you got a lot going on. You bought that, you did this, you did that, you did this. And remember, oh, this is not speaking of what a woman does in a space of six months or eight months. This is probably over her lifetime. As you're reading this, apply wisdom. Ask God for wisdom. This is over her life. The last verse, right? Yes, she speaks with kindness when she gives instructions, speaking kindly. That's something I've had to practice. I'm learning, I'm trying to be kinder when I give instructions to my children or when my husband and I having conversations. I'm intentionally speaking softly. Instead of, nah, this is it, you're gonna, I don't wanna cut with my words. I know I'm capable of it, but I don't want to, right? Be kind with your words. It closes by saying, charm is deceptive and beauty does not last. But a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. This is over her life. It's not in one go. It says her children stand and call her blessed. Do your children stand in the first six months of being born and call you blessed? No, this is over time. This year she bought a field. This year she did that. She's been planning for winter. She's getting better with time. The one thing that will hurt us is if we try to take Proverbs 31, now we will hurt ourselves. We'll go into overdrive and we'll be stressed out. Take this in nibbles. Over the years of being a wife, you will get better with time. You will find your way. You will find that investment. It never said invest tomorrow. It never said buy a field on Wednesday. And after buying your field on Wednesday, plant the vineyard. And then after that, you better go spin some, some, some fabric. And then after that, you have to go find wool and flax. Then after that, you're going to have to do this for your servants. Then after that, you have to prepare for winter. This is over time. This is her life. It's not once and for all. So after reading this, the one word of encouragement I have is that we become the Proverbs 31 woman. We practice the Proverbs 31 woman. As you pick up, pick up one thing, one thing per month that you're going to do and say, okay, how many virtues are there? Okay, 15. All right, I'm gonna start by being trustworthy. Yep, that's what I'm gonna start with. Okay, after that, I wanna speak kindly. Okay, cool, let's practice that. So with each virtue, practice it until it is established and rooted in you. Because if you try to do this with the speed of light, you are fake and you will not be able to sustain it because you're doing it in your flesh. You need God. You need the Holy Spirit to help you, right? Trying out new recipes is not going to happen in a week or in a month. Over time, you're going to discover something. Ask my husband about recipes. We have a few jokes <laughs> about stuff I have conked up. <laughs> And I'm sure I have a few more I will mess up in years to come, but I've gotten better. I have gotten much, much better. I now know, right? I know better, so I'm gonna do better. But it doesn't mean I'm not gonna mess up. Do waking up before dawn. You can start by waking up early consistently and say, right, I have mastered this thing of waking up early. I've mastered my body. Now next, tell me about fields. Tell me about investments. Read on it. It might actually require you to go back to school. Don't rush to be Proverbs 31 woman. Analyze it and see what work you need to get done over your lifetime. That brings the chapter analysis to an end. Oh my gosh, this has been amazing. Thank you so much. If you've journeyed with me from chapter one to now, thank you. If you just caught on on chapter 31 because that's the one you wanted, thank you. It's so lovely to have you here. I truly appreciate it. I am proud of you for taking time to read and listen to the truth of God. Please remember, none of these opinions are of me. This is just the word of God. The word of God is true. It is pure. It is beautiful. It is life-saving. And I love you with the love of God. It is a Sunday morning. I have to go get ready for church and picking up my mom. It's going to be fun. Now I'll catch you on another series which I'll announce pretty soon. I love you with the love of God. Be blessed.